the 1980s brought in all sorts of brand new foods. There's a Dan and body in everybody. Unlike some yogurts, it's low in fat. The whole thought pattern was, if you didn't eat fat, you couldn't get fat. Not having fat does not automatically make something health food. And that's where we get into this, this debate about, is it just calories in, calories out? Does it not matter what we eat as long as we're burning enough calories to burn it off? And we still didn't know if eating a low fat diet was a good thing. It was a, some of the smartest scientists and the president of the National Academy of Sciences in the late 1970s called this a huge experiment in which the American public were the subjects. The American has an infinite number of combination of choices with which he can constitute a healthy diet. Unfortunately, he also has an infinite number of combinations from which he can choose an unbalanced diet. Let's examine why there is so much confusion about good nutrition. One reason is that we have been given a lot of misinformation, usually by those looking to make a profit. Today, there are still many unusual ideas as to what we should eat. People tend to believe that just because it's in print or on television, it must be true. The 80s also brought in all sorts of new fitness trends. Make the commitment now and watch how fast you see results. Are you ready to do the workout? We couldn't get enough of fitness in the 1980s, but although we were doing all of this, we weren't getting any thinner. Our sugar consumption increases in part with the introduction of high fructose corn syrup, and that's an unintended consequence of these government actions. It's arguably the case if, if they had done nothing, we wouldn't have had this epidemic. We might have had it anyway, but uh, they they probably or almost assuredly made it worse. For 25 years, we've been pushing a low-fat dogma. It said, eat less fat. First, it said, eat less total fat, and you'll have less heart disease, less cancer, and you'll weigh less. Then well, That's not exactly true. This started because there's incontrovertible evidence that saturated fat is bad, no, and I, that I, is well-established in long-term trials. You build up in a community, institutions, organizations, everybody collects to them people who think just like they do. Like, we like each other, we respect each other because we think alike. <laughs> you know, I know nothing about you other than that you think like I do, so I respect the way you think. And institutions do this. And then somebody else comes along from the outside and says, oh, you guys all got it wrong. And look, here's the evidence. All these obese, diabetic people are neck deep in obesity and diabetes. We gotta change everything. It's hard to accept hard to back out of. There's no way to back out of it that doesn't destroy your credibility. In this country, we have freedom of choice to say what we want to say. We have freedom of choice to print what we want to print. We have freedom of choice to think what we want to think. But we do not have freedom of choice for our own health care. Why? I guess profit and politics and power. The MDs and nutritionists and um, all people need to work together for the total benefit of this country's health. So in 1992, we did the most brilliant thing we've ever done as a country. We started the food pyramid. Now, this is so ridiculous that I can't even ever remember, but I, because in my own mind, it makes no sense. I always have to read it off of a piece of paper. The pyramid at the base, the biggest part, was bread, cereal, and rice. Six to 11 servings, not per week, hang on folks, per day. If you went to the maximum vegetables, that's five vegetables a day, five servings. And fruit, if you went to the max, that's four. That's 20 servings of carbohydrates every day. And then when you get into milk and dairy, milk has carbohydrates, that's lactose and milk. That's like drinking sugar and on meat, the most you can have in any given day is three servings. Now it gets even worse because we start wondering this. What's a serving? What's a serving of meat? They didn't tell you how many ounces. Well, I can tell you it was two to three ounces per serving, but who knew that? 
most healthcare professionals are familiar with ketoacidosis, and that's a state where the body is out of control. Diabetes is out of control. Blood glucose is through the roof. Insulin is not able to keep up with this glucose derangement, and so that's a life-threatening state when you're type 2 diabetic out of control. Nutritional ketosis is quite a different scenario. Blood sugars are absolutely under control. The patient is healthy in every single way. Electrolytes, insulin, glucose, perfectly, perfectly controlled. We have now trained the body to switch over from burning carbohydrate as the primary fuel. Now the individual becomes fat adapted and they use fat as the primary source of energy. And that's really the difference between a very unhealthy and a very healthy state. We had a scientific question in the 1960s where the researchers asked the wrong question, but there were questions we needed answered. We know that the way you gain weight is you take in more calories than you don't than than you burn. And those calories can be fat or they can be carbohydrate. And so they get this hypothesis, which sounds reasonable, that fat people get fat because they accumulate a little bit of extra calories every day. And we could get back to this by not asking how much extra calories. They don't have to really confront the problems with the hypothesis. And that becomes a theory ever since. The history of science, once again, is full of commonsensical facts that turned out to be dead wrong when we did the science. You're certain, you use words like it proves. When you look at the data, it either isn't there or we just which, didn't do the experiment. Is, is, is.